So thanks for joining me, Tui. I, I have been interested in, in speaking with you and learning a little bit more about you and then also talking about Procore as well, uh, because as I was you know, reading your, your LinkedIn profile and some of your own history, uh, well, actually, we'll get to that with, with my very first question. So in looking at your LinkedIn profile prior to founding Procore, you built a software consultancy developing corporate HR applications that connected to ERP systems. And, and that stands for Enterprise Resource Planning? Yep, you nailed it. Exactly. All right. All right. Kudos to, uh, to Google for helping me out there. Uh, but, but from there, you then leaped into the world of construction. And, and when I read that, I'm thinking, wow, how, how does one go from this to that, you know, what, what was the catalyst? What, what made it happen? What changed your life trajectory? Well, so if you don't, yeah, so actually um, my LinkedIn profile doesn't really go back to the eighth grade. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll back time a little bit before my LinkedIn, by the way, that's a good idea. I'm going to update my LinkedIn profile. I'm going to talk about what I did in the eighth grade, but um, no, I grew up in uh, Southern California and um, I had a, uh, a grandfather who was very interested in having a grandson who was not a uh, you know juvenile delinquent wanted me to get a job right so after school so he convinced me to get a job after school and I had always loved construction growing up we'd always had construction around our house my dad was like a fix and flipper so I always had contractors around I just loved it um, so I decided if I was going to get a job I was going to get a job in construction so I got a job working in a cabinet shop um, that also was a general contracting company so they would build cabinetry for homes and as well as actually build the homes themselves so uh, eighth grade, I started sweeping up the cabinet shop and hanging out with the people who I, I just love, just the construction industry folks uh, I just had an affinity with. So over, I'm going to go very quickly through time, but um, ended up graduating from high school, ended up going to college for uh, a year or so, <clears throat> and then decided I didn't want to go to college and I wanted to become a real estate developer. <clears throat> so I went back to my grandfather <clears throat> and borrowed um, some money to go build some uh, some some projects down in the Coachella Valley, which is near Palm Springs, California. And um, I had some success, uh, small success, but little, you know. Uh, and then so I, I here I was like, you know, have, have graduated from swinging a hammer to actually managing a construction project uh, on paper and, and all. So very deep, steeped in construction. A few things happened along the way. I ended up getting into the software industry in the Bay Area and uh, worked for a company, then started my company, the one that you mentioned. Uh, and so I knew a lot about software development. And then at that point, I knew a lot about construction. And this is, this is where it all came together, was um, building a home <clears throat> for my, my family, realizing that it was uh, chaos and mayhem and that I was, I, was the, uh, I, was, I was bearing the brunt of the chaos because it, it meant that I was writing checks for things that you know, were mistakes, things that were getting ripped out. And it was just, it just, I knew there had to be a better way. And that was where Procore started. Interesting. So it's, I, I'm actually kind of glad you went back all the way to grade eight, because that, that does help sort of lay the foundation for, you know, two we then and then watching your progression and where we are now with, with the founding of Procore. Uh, now, Procore, and, and we'll get into a little bit uh, as to the solutions that Procore offers in the construction sector. Uh, but getting back to that LinkedIn profile that you say you're going to update, hopefully not too <laughs> soon after, after this interview, uh, but getting back to LinkedIn, uh, you write that my focus is on helping to modernize an industry that has been unfairly labeled as yeah. tech averse. Uh, so you just finished mentioning a, a little bit of a horror show there when, when you were constructing your, your own home uh, and construction is, I, I hear this a lot, that it is uh, a laggard when it comes to construction technology. Uh, but what caught my interest was that uh, you call it unfairly labeled as tech averse. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about your, your position on this unfair labeling. Yeah, well, and by the way, the, the, it's interesting you use the adjective laggard because that's the one I'm out fighting against all, every day and have been for the last 20 years. Um, the, the industry are not laggards. The industry was uh, underserved with technology forever. In fact, it, it's really interesting, Anthony, that I, 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 when I started Procore, of course, I'd grown up in construction. I knew what a job site was all about. I knew how construction was done. 
and I knew how complicated it was. And I knew how you had all these people coming together that had never worked together before to try to build a prototype that will never get built ever again. I, I just, I knew about the complexity um, of it. And so when I came back to the industry to solve this problem in, in 2002, um, and I was walking on the job sites and I was talking to people about, you know, how we could apply technology to this to the, the challenges of construction, what I saw was just a whole bunch of highly capable, highly, um, you know, just the smartest people in the world who were able to manage this complexity, but they didn't have any technology to help them, right? So they were using pen and paper, they were doing everything they could. And as a matter of fact, a lot of them would sit in a job site trailer and they could do things with Microsoft Excel, Anthony, that like the bankers that I work with every day can't do. They were so clever at finding solutions, but they didn't have the technology they needed. And so unfortunately, because the internet hadn't really made it to the job site, um, people thought of folks in construction as being you know, laggards, right? But um, they certainly weren't. But the minute that the internet did make it to the job site and the iPhone came out in 2007, the iPad came out in 2011, like the folks that were you know, struggling without the proper technology started getting the proper technology and boy, did that, you know, change the industry. And I think that was the, one of the genesis of Procore's success is that we were there at the right time um, to help serve them. You raise an excellent point there. And, you know, I've, I've, I've had similar conversations with, with other folks serving the construction market, but I, I don't know if anyone has really hit the nail on the head so succinctly uh, with, uh, you know, their, they were, I guess, tech ready, tech waiting. Uh, they were just waiting for the solutions to arrive to be tailored to them and speak their language. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I kind of feel like I'm, a, I'm the evangelist for the industry because uh, I, I see it every day, Anthony. Like people will come up to me and say, you run this technology company and you serve an industry that uses, you know, does construction, they, they use technology. And I'm like, let me tell you a story. And by the way, I like to tell my stories, Anthony, so you got to be careful. <laughs> now, one of the things uh, outside of the unfair labeling of, of being tech averse, uh, something that uh, I, I, I think we're, we're all on the same page on is that uh, there are issues of labor shortages oh, in yeah. the construction industry. Uh, yep. and, and sort of coupled with that, although I don't want to marry the two together, there's also negative perceptions about the construction sector in general. Uh, yeah. So here's where, uh, you know, a little bit of you and a little bit of Procore. Uh, how are you and by extension Procore uh, trying to tackle these negative perceptions and hopefully selling the industry to, you know, would-be participants, people who can make yeah. a career of it? Yeah, I'm really glad you, you you brought this up. And by the way, I think it's okay to marry the two because um, it is, um, well, first and foremost, I'm, you know, as I've been doing this for 20 years in, in Procore, there hasn't been a year where I, the number one issue that our customers are facing is, is finding qualified uh, skilled labor. Uh, to do the jobs. And again, it's really important that you, that, that we focus on the qualified and skilled labor. Um, do, working in construction is not, you know, knowing how to operate a shovel, right? W working construction is, is so much more than that. And I, as I, as I mentioned, it's, it's highly complicated and, and it's actually getting more and more complicated over time. So um, the, the two challenges that the industry faces around labor is one is there is this stigma. Um, it's not like, you know, you brag to your parents about becoming a doctor, you know, the same way you would brag the, about, you know, becoming a, um, a superintendent or a project manager, though, I, I really think we should. So there's a, there's the stigma there, but there also the fact that construction has gotten so much more complicated that it's not just a, you can go apply for a job and start doing construction. There's, there's a lot of training that needs to go into it. So, um, you know, the construction industry is one of the largest industries in the world. Uh, there's no matter what's happening with the global economy and the macroeconomic environment, there is always a, uh, there's always a need for construction. Roads have to get built. Hospitals have to get renovated. Um, and so there's a lot that, uh, there's a lot that, you know, has to happen all the time. So, um, constant challenge with, uh, with the labor shortage. So the question is, what are we doing to help solve for that? Uh, and it, and it's, we're doing a lot and it's things that I'm really proud of. Um, we have a, a, a giving arm called Procore.org and it's, it's, it's a, um, it's an opportunity for us 
to um, step aside from the commercial aspect of our relationship with the industry and to give back. So we donate our product uh, um, and a lot of our training services to the industry for free. We have a lot of continuing education programs uh, that we provide to the industry at no cost to try to make sure that people that are in the industry can keep their skill levels up. Um, we have a, um, a, a, a program in the United States, which now we're taking more globally, where uh, most construction management programs taught at, at the university level are taught using Procore. We give our software to the universities for free to train the next generation of builders. Um, and we do a, a lot of that. We even, we even go all the way down to K through 12 and, uh, and, and provide STEM uh, uh, education, again, for free. And you know, we, we are very, um, uh, we believe in women in construction, which is another uh, uh, aspect. You cannot get full employment in construction unless you attract both male and female participants into the industry. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, there's just a lot that we uh, continue to do to try to make it so construction is both looked as, as, as a, a career that is something to be proud of, as well as to help give people the skills that they need in order to be successful uh, in the industry. So it's, it's an area of focus that we really, really believe in. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that's, it, it's something that I, I see as a reawakening, uh, at, at least in North America, with, with people recognizing and realizing that you know, uh, we, we need skilled tradesmen, trades workers. Uh, we, we need to focus on construction because as you say it is global you know something is always getting built and I, I see with with more people and more stakeholders talking about it there and I hope to live to see the see this come to fruition uh, a sea change with with people again respecting and hopefully desiring uh, to get into construction to get into the trades and make careers out of it uh, and I like that you also mentioned um talking about the K through 12 schools, uh, mm -hmm. because being part of various apprenticeship panels and stuff like that, uh, the, the common message is we need to get to the next generation much earlier. We can't, we can't wait until they're, they're at that point in their teens and they're already choosing their career path in college or university. You gotta get them excited when they're still kids and, 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 yeah. and keep it going. Well, and by the way, so two things, um, we have, uh, We've learned over the years that uh, construction is actually a relatively high paying job. Uh, and so if we, can, if we can get people to understand that, and it's, it's educating the K through 12 is important. Almost more importantly is educating the parents of the kids in K through 12 uh, as, to, as to the fact that their children can earn a six figure salary in this industry. <clears throat> and the other thing that I, I, I love to point out is once you have learned a skill in a trade, they can't take that away from you. You can go, you can do that in Minneapolis, you can do it in Toronto, you can do it in Vancouver, you can do it in Houston, Texas, you can do it in Singapore. And, and to your point, uh, or maybe as an extension to your point, I've, I've spoken with, uh, uh, let's say, you know, uh, more advanced in years, uh, uh, journeyman, and just by nature of being in the construction sector, working job sites, I mean, all of them are picking up skills from this trade, that trade, uh, yep. and, and it's just... Can you be more well-rounded than that? I, I don't know if you can. <laughs> no, it's true. And by the way, to that point, um, also construction is getting more specialized, kind of on the going the other direction. Uh, you know, if you're if you are a uh, an electrician and you're uh, building data centers, for instance, the complexity of those projects are so unique that then when you can go find a job pretty much anywhere else, because just having a standard um, you know apprenticeship through an electric electrician program is probably not quite enough to get you that next job. So yeah, it's um it is it's just interesting to see how the industry has evolved and and, and basically how much um, complexity is in the system. Even if you rewind time twenty years before there was any technology in construction and a light switch was a light switch, right now. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you know, I, when I was growing up, you, tell me if this resonates with you. I had in my little tiny bedroom, I had a single um, light fixture in the center of my room on the ceiling, and it had an incandescent light bulb that was screwed in. And by the door of the room, you'd flip a switch and it would turn the light on. And then my mom would say goodnight and turn the light switch off and walk out. That is not the way that buildings electrical systems work now, right? They're, they use lighting control units, which are servers that are, they use uh, motion sensors and occupancy sensors. And it's just gotten so complicated over the last, you know, decade or two that um, it, it requires a tremendous amount of education and skills to su succeed in the industry. 
it it is exciting. Uh, you know, being uh, uh, editor of Electrical Business Magazine, it's uh, eh, this is my own bias coming through as well too. But uh, you know, the things that move electrons and signals and power and communications, it's it's such an exciting sector to be in. You know, a, a sub trade to be in and. To your point, it does. Uh, it is branching out into all these specialties. It, to me, that kind of stuff is really cool. It makes construction sexy. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I, people who gravitate towards this industry too, Anthony, are people that love to build, right? They love to, you know, they love to put systems together, and and uh, and they're curious about the evolution of the industry. And you're right. It's look. I'm 54 years old. 20 years ago, if somebody said to me that there was going to be advancement in the world uh, for electricians, I would have been like, electricians pull Romex, right? That's all they do. They pull Romex and they, they put bipolar or, uh, you know, sw- bipolar switches and just, you know, switches and that's it. But th- it is so different and so much more interesting now, you know? So Brocor's stated mission is to ultimately connect everyone who touches construction, uh, capital, insurance, suppliers, designers, the builders, uh, and, and manage data and drive better business outcomes. So yep. here, here, here comes my, my closing question then. Uh, you, you mentioned that it's, it's still a journey to get everyone on board. But so tell me, summarize for me, how, how goes the battle then in this industry that has been labeled tech averse? Uh, well, so it's, it's, it's actually, we've seen a, we've seen an evolution of the battle. Okay. And I love that you're using that because, uh, prior to recently, the the battle was really trying to get tools in the hands of, of the industry that would help them, uh, protect their businesses. In other words, um, how do we, as a general contractor or a specialty contractor or an owner, how do we ensure that we get the job done and we don't lose money or go out of business, right? So it's very defensive. And so those were the, the tools that we provided the industry were very much to helping people, helping people hold their partners accountable, um, documenting things, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. What's really interesting in this battle that you, we're, we're talking about now is we've moved into the a world of offensive uh, strategy, which is, so yes, we can help our, the industry uh, protect themselves from the downside. What about what can we do now to help them, um, you know, be, run better businesses on the upside, right? So there's there's a lot of things that are happening now in the digital transformation, which is because we are a platform and we have all of the customers and all of the end users, collaborators on our platform, we're able to take all the data that's generated through the course of construction of any project uh, and provide insights back to the industry so they can run better businesses, safer projects. They can actually they can actually run higher margin businesses because they can actually see things that might be about to happen before they happen and they can run interference before it turns into a, a loss. So it's, that's the, the, the trajectory of the battle is gone from a we're def- defensive mode to offensive mode. And that's just going to make the industry that much more efficient. There's a stat that um, will just blow your mind, which is the industry, which is about $14 trillion globally, uh, loses about a half a trillion dollars, $500 billion a year in inefficiencies. That's wasted materials. That's people going to the wrong job site. That's, that's bad coordination. That's all the things that happen because of the, the, the systems aren't in place. And so when we're successful, we drive those efficiencies in. And guess who gets to benefit from those savings? It's the industry. And that means that they can run better businesses. And, you know, frankly, that could translate into better uh, pay for the people that uh, service the industry. And there's just more money to go around to, uh, to, uh, to allow people to run better businesses. I, I appreciate uh, you taking the time, to I, I like that you've... Uh discuss the the defensive nature of the solution first and moving into that offensive nature uh, to to get ahead of of obstacles before they even become obstacles. That's that's a nuance that, unless you had mentioned it to me, I may not have picked up on. So I'm glad you said that. Well, you know, so I, it's, an, it's, it's a complicated industry that we serve. So it's, it's always hard to distill down the big picture because, you know, uh, everyone's solving, you know, slightly different problems. But ultimately, everyone's trying to get jobs done on time, on budget, safely. Uh, and when we're successful, they do. Well, and thankfully, there's people like yourself and organizations like Procore who are helping them achieve that and helping move the construction industry forward. Uh, Tui, thanks again for 
taking the time. Anthony, it's a pleasure meeting you. Hopefully we'll get more time together in the future. I, I'd hopefully you consider me a resource for you if you needed anything at all. I'd, I'd hope you'd reach out. Well, I mean, that boardroom you're sitting in is a very attractive resource. I can see myself desiring that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, you just let me know. And you're always welcome to come to Santa Barbara, California, too. If, the, if, you, if you'd rather do this in person next time, we'd, we'd, we'd love to host you.